Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of T-Dog RC. I'm Tim and in this episode we are going to be starting the build of the Atom RC Swordfish. Um, this is the PMP version. Now my idea of PMP I'm guessing isn't the same as Atom RC. Uh, to me PMP means you kind of get it out the box, everything's set up maybe a little bit of assembly required to put the tail on and that sort of thing and then you put your radio gear in put your flight controller in and you're good to go uh, but in this case this is more like a kit but what they do is they include all the parts so the motors the speed controllers uh, all the components and things like that but you've got to do the whole assembly you know the servos aren't installed nothing like that so you need to do the entire assembly yourself um, so it's going to take me a little longer than i was i was hoping i was hoping this would be a quick sort of assembly and be able to get it flying but um, anyway we'll make a start on this uh, so let's get it on the bench and let's get stuck in and just a quick one before we do that 80% um, of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribers which is pretty mad really you assume that most of the views are from subscribers but they're not so only a small percentage are actually from existing subscribers so thank you very much to all the existing subscribers I really appreciate your support um, but if you're not a subscriber, it doesn't cost you anything. And if you're into fixed wing RC and, as you can see, a bit of FPV, bolts and nitro, all sorts of stuff all around fixed wing, then you want to subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. You just hit the subscribe button and you're good to go. Um, so really great to have you on board. If you want to do that, you'd be really helping me out. Okay, well, we're back on the bench with the Atom RC Swordfish and we're going to start the build. As I said in the intro there, it's been a few days since I did that intro. Um, but uh, finally managed to get in back in the workshop tonight and it's it's horrendous outside. There's a storm Aisha, I think it is, it's just hit the UK. 60 mile an hour winds, um, like driving rain. The only good thing is it's picked up a little bit, the temperature has, because the last couple of weeks it's been below, well below zero degrees um, and it's it's difficult to get out into the workshop when it's freezing cold like that. Even though I've got a heater in here, it it, it never really heats up, and um, it's not particularly when you're sat in a nice warm house. It's it's hard to get yourself motivated to come out here. But it's certainly uh, a bit warmer, and I've got myself a nice new heater actually that I bought off Amazon that lets me control it with an app on my phone, so I can switch it on um, about half an hour or so before I decide I'm going to come in to the workshop and get it preheated which is rather nice so that's what I've done tonight and it's uh, yeah feeling pretty toasty so enough waffle uh, let's get on with this swordfish it's really a kit it's not PMP it's you just get all the bits so we've got all my parts laid out here so we've got a bag with the servos in I've got some motor mount parts there um, various wires and all the connections for the wings um, we've got the motors and the ESCs, um, so another pack there, and then we've got this last pack here which has got uh, some push rods and I think some fins to go on the bottom of the fuselage, battery strap and bits and bobs like that. So there's actually quite a lot to do. So um, I'm kind of following, it doesn't really matter to be honest, but I'm following along with what the manual says and it says to start with doing the fin. Uh, and that is literally all it says. So it just says, there's just a very small picture of the tail and it says install the V-tail, that's it. Um, so it doesn't tell you, you know, it's not rocket science, but it doesn't tell you what bolts you have to use or how it goes together. But I think looking through all the bits that I've got in this pack here, um, there are some little hex bolts with corresponding lock nuts so I think let's get this out of its packet and then we've got these can't remember whether I work these spent the um, surfaces a little bit which is always a good thing to do with foam hinges as I'm sure most of you know just to make sure you don't stress the servos out too much. So you've got obviously one goes in like that and then underneath it's got these slots here so you, you can just get to 
there's two holes in there you can't really see and then there's one hole here in that one um, so you poke the screwdriver through and I'm guessing get the bolt through one side and then on the other side you've got the same holes no, actually you haven't on that one okay so maybe it just screws into there then maybe you just screw it in and the screw just locks into there yeah because that's not got those on okay let me just see what I've got in the pack and I'll uh, I'll come back okay I'll check through all the bags and I think this is going to be the one and uh, there's actually no label on this one all the others are labeled up um, but there's the servo pack which is does look like it's only got screws for the servos there's this pack which has got loads of bits and bobs in but I can't imagine that that's all for the wings and the quick release for the wings and the lights and all that sort of stuff. I can't imagine that's got the tail components in. There's the motor pack, which has just got stuff for the motor in, which I've checked. And then this pack, which has got the bolts with the lock nuts in, but they're not the right thing for the tail. And then I've got this last pack with these wooden bits in, which I think are like the motor mounts and stuff. Um, which has got these little screws in with a, a hex head um, and they do fit into the tail there so I, I think it's got to be those I've, I mean the instructions are so basic um, and there's no labels on any any of these things I, that's the only thing I can go with so a bit rubbish really not that impressed but um, I guess if it's the wrong thing I'll just have to I'll just have to find a suitable replacement in my uh, box of bits. So let's just get... So that's the right hex head. So let's get this on like this. And then let's see if we can get one of these in. So obviously it's quite fiddly. See if that does the job. It does indeed. Okay. Let's pull in that front end so that's working. So we just got this last one to fit in. Don't want to over tighten these obviously because it's it's only going into plastic. But don't particularly want these to come out either. I think that's gonna be okay. I could mm, I can't really, it's gonna say I could drop a little bit of shoe goop down there, those slots, but you can't really get to them but uh, I think that's okay I think that's as tight as it needs to be without going crazy just give it one last little tweak okay well that's got that on so now what we've got to do is we have got to oh I've just realized what those lock nuts are for stupid me they're for the um, ball joints that's what they're for and the other bolts okay so that makes sense so what we've got to do now is I've got to thread those ball joints on and we've got to hook the servos up the servos go in this little hatch underneath here on the bottom so we've just got two slots there as you can see for the servos to go in Push rods are flying about all over the place. I need to get those secured really before I lose them. Okay, so let's have a look. Now let's hope that the slots for the servos are the right size because I find on so many K 
kits and things that this, uh, the slots for the servos is just never big enough. Let's see. Yeah, they're going to be okay. They are going to be okay. So, question is, where do we route the leads? Do we take that piece out? No, I think that's... Okay, what I'm going to do, and it's perhaps designed like this, is there's a slot in the middle there. I'm going to route the leads back up through there. I'm assuming that's what that's for, because you wouldn't put a switch in there. Um, so, that's... Let me get my tweezers. So we'll get that in there and then I'll grab my tweezers and just pull this back up it's easier said than done okay that's got that right let me get the other one in Do the same with that one. Ah, now then, that one's got a much longer lead. Uh, again, I'm going to assume that is for the wings. Let's just see if it says anything in the instructions. <laughs> These instructions are rubbish, honestly. Um, No, it doesn't, but I can't see why you'd have a big massive lead in the same spot as where the flight controller is going to go. So I'm going to take a guess that they are for the the ones with the long leads are for the wings, and these with the shorter ones are for the tail. So that's how they've gone in there, and I've just rooted the leads up through there. So all I need to do now is get those screwed in position um, and then we're on to hooking the push rods up so I'll get the screwed in first and then we'll, we'll get on with the push rods okay so servos are in push rods are hooked up got the servo tester on them to get them centralized and then I've gone into this bag to get out the two little ball joints and the bolts and lock nuts for those as well um, it's quite a good little thing this it's just a little tray I've got. Um, I think my wife actually got it for me. Um, but it's just um, separated into compartments like that. And it's really good for... So like I've put the servo screws and, think, and the arms and things in there. And then this one's got the control horns. Just handy to have something like that on the bench. So you're not fiddling around in the bag or just pouring them out onto your bench where they can go everywhere. You've got these separate compartments of things. I find that works quite well. So obviously with these push rods, just got to thread them on here. Just hold these, sorry not the push rods, the ball joints, but I will just hold the push rods. And looking at that, that is nowhere near long enough, which is interesting to say the least. I know what I've done, like an idiot. I've put the servos in the wrong way around. I have. It does actually show you that in the manual as well. What a buffoon. Right, okay. I'm going to have to unscrew the servos and turn them around. Hold tight. Okay, so I've got the servos turned around. After that stupid mistake, so they're in the right way around now with the control arms towards the back. So we can get these ball joints threaded on and that looks a lot better now in terms of lining those up so that's probably about right maybe just half a turn more and then we get one of these to go through
Okay, probably just once winding in, just another half turn. Okay, that's looking good there. So we'll get the little lock nut fastened on and just get that tightened up. I'm going to do those mega tight, obviously. That's about spot on, so that's good. Right, we'll um, get the other one done and then we're kind of done on the tail then. Uh, so then we can start having a look at the wings. Okay, so moving on to the wings. Um, first thing I'm going to do is going to get the servo installed. Um, so I was definitely right in choosing the ones with the longer leads for the wings um, because the servo lead just runs down here. So I've got to get that pushed in and then it just comes out here and then there's going to be the quick, uh, quick release mechanism there. So I've got to wire all that up in a bit. Um, that might be for another video though. So we've got to get this glued in here. Uh, now to glue that in, I'm going to roughen this side up just with some sandpaper. And then I like to use foam tack for this sort of thing because I find that works really well with, well, with foam, obviously. Um, it's contact adhesive. Um, tends to stick pretty well. Prefer that to like CA, CAing them or anything like that. Uh, but I'll also probably put a bit of tape over those just to add a bit of extra security. Uh, then we've got these little push rods again. Um, so that end's just going to go into the servo arm. And then again, we've got the little bolts with the lock nuts, um, which is actually a really nice setup. Um, you know, that's a nice thing that Atom RC have done there with both the tail and these. And in fact, the wings have got a really nice uh, horn set up there because they've got double horns and then the ball joint is just going to fit in between them. So that's really solid. And those horns, um, the, this carbon bar goes through the horn. So really nice little setup that is. Uh, and then we've just got some covers which I think are just going to go over here uh, I need to just double check the instructions but I think they just cover the servo arms up um, so um, yeah let me uh, get on with this I'll do it on high speed video so you can see what I'm up to so uh, yeah let's get started Okay, so that's got the servo installed there. That's gone in really nice. As I said, that's a really nice setup there with the ball joint. There's very little play in that. So pleased with that. Uh, and then I'll just get some clear tape just to put over that, um, but I won't do that just yet. So next thing I wanna have a look at is getting the LED light installed in the wing tip, um, which is gonna be in this bag here, which has got all sorts of bits and bobs in it. So, Let's have a look what we've got in here. So we've got these, these little lenses, which go on the end, like that, I'm guessing. So I've got to decide best thing to stick those on with. Um, might actually use a little bit of foam tack for those as well. Um, okay, so let's have a look what else we've got in here. Bunch of cables. Um, and then I'm guessing that's the actual LED. Okay, so it looks like you have, yeah, they're giving you a left and a right there, but we've got two of those, I think. Oh no, we haven't. Okay, so there's just one. So it looks like you snap that in half. Yeah, so I think you just snap this little board in half. And then it's, it is labelled up 
left and right, so that is the right hand one. Um, there are some little screws in here as well. Let's just fish one of those out. there so I think yeah so I actually think they've got this mixed up on here because they've put uh, left on the back of there I don't know if you can just about see that there at the bottom it says left but that's the green one um, so the green one should be on the right and also it fits into that uh, lens like that so we screw that in place in there. Uh, yes, yeah, so that goes in there. And then that is the one that's going to go on there because that's the right shape for that one. So they've definitely got that wrong. I'm pretty sure they have. Um, so what I also need to do though is solder some, <coughs> excuse me, solder some wires up to that. So I'm going to have to take that back out uh, and just get that soldered up. Um, let's see, there must just be these, it's going to be these wires here just with the uh, positive and negative on. Yeah, there we go. So that's going to be the lights for those. So let me, uh, I'll put that side away for the time being because we're only doing the right hand wing just now. So I'm going to get that soldered up, get it glued in place, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so we've got that done. Um, so that was a bit of fiddly because uh, the wires are very fine, but uh, I did the, uh, the left one as well or right, as it says on the back of here, but it's actually left. Um, yeah, so I got that soldered up. I thought I may as well do it while I've got the uh, soldering iron out. Um, just soldered up that little board there and got that screwed in place. And as you can see, the right side, now the only thing that mistake I did make was um, I didn't test the light before I glued the lens in, uh, which is a bit of a stupid thing, but fortunately, as you can see, it's working. So um, it's, just a bit of a dodgy connection because I've just got the cable shoved into the end of this battery lead here. Um, but yeah, that's all working nicely. It's nice and bright as you can see. And then I've ran the cable in down through the slot there. Let me just unplug this now. Um, and then I think everything terminates inside the, the little motor mount here. Uh, and then I think you have a little, there's like a, a board that goes in here that connects everything together, I believe. Um, or well, certainly the ESC goes in there, so I just need to check that out. But I don't think they run right to the end here. Um, I think the board, there's a board that connects it all together, basically. But I need to confirm it anyway. Not that the instructions tell you much, but we'll see. Um, so, yeah, that's looking good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack on with the other wing. I won't film that. So I'll get the servo installed and get the light installed exactly the same way as I've just done. Uh, and then we're going to be moving on to getting the motor installed. Um, and then I think we'll call it a day then for this particular video. Um, but yeah, I'll get that right, uh, the other, sorry, left wing done uh, and show you what that looks like with the red light. Okay, so got the left wing all set up with the red LED on there. Uh, everything tested, all good. I got these uh, servo arm covers uh, stuck on. It turns out that the little um, double-sided sticky pad was for for these um, and not for the servos anyway. So um, yeah, just stuck those on. Seems to be pretty good. So next job for the wings, and this is where I'm going to wrap this video up, is this little bag of tricks. So in here we have got some servo signal leads, some ESCs, very unusual ESCs, because um, it looks like you have to basically, you know, and this goes back to this PMP thing, you know, even these are not like a normal ESC. Um, you know, these are well, I've got to solder all these up. So we've got the motor to solder on here, um, the battery connectors on there, and then 
those little pads there are for um, that's where we can solder the lights to and that signal lead there is for um, the actual like speed controller servo cable so we've got to do a fair bit of soldering on that that's fine I quite like soldering uh, and then we've got a bag for prop nuts and the uh, motor mounts and of course we've got the motors which are uh, 2306 and they are 1700 kV by the looks of things. So yeah, nice little motors. Hi everyone, it's Tim from the future here. Um, so you might have noted in this video, I've said a couple of times now, I'm going to wrap this video up, but I don't appear to wrap it up. And I think I just got a bit carried away. So I am going to wrap it up here. So I'm just going to pause the video. Uh, I'm going to end the video here and then the next video will be carrying on, installing the motor, getting the SC soldered up, getting that quick release board all soldered up. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Thank you for everyone who's hit the subscribe button and thank you for all my existing subscribers. If you're enjoying the video, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments, stick them in the comments box and I'll always get back to you. And in the meantime, I'll see you soon for the next one.